So tonight, we're going to talk about prospecting. But what's the purpose of prospecting? Recruit adding names to your Recruits. list. Clients. Adding names to your list, right? With phone numbers. So, so the purpose <laughs> of prospecting is no more, no less than identifying who you're going to what? Contact. Contact, right? Yeah. And so, what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about is some tools that can help you to be able to identify who you're gonna contact, and then <laughs> second, how you are going to approach them. Yeah, it feels more natural. So we're gonna talk about having those natural conversations, and we're gonna really focus today on two things. If you have somebody who's been referred to you, right? How do you gather those names as a referral? And then how do you have that conversation to be able to uh, start the conversation with somebody that's been referred to you? And then secondly, how do you start the conversation that might have been a cold conversation using Legacy Shield as a tool to start this stuff? So it's a useful tool and almost nobody has it, right? Well, this is uh, maybe the best kept secret, but when you put somebody in, uh, your Legacy Shield account is one of your contacts. They get this for free. And the system is going to send them an email to be able to uh, invite them to set up their own account and to claim their own free port. How do we get those names and extract them from the client that we're talking with to be able to then talk to them, right? Because those people will all show up after they get put into your portal. In your advisor portal, as prospects, then if they don't have an estate plan, they'll be able to choose to purchase their estate plan in the portal if they want to, right? But the, everybody that you put in shows up here as prospects for you, and then those prospects are people that you can then contact and sit down with, and we'll talk about having to have that conversation. So if you say, for example, you know, I'm looking for somebody who's a business owner, then they're going to think about people who are business owners, right? And, even just saying that, you might have had somebody come to mind, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when we go through this process, <coughs> because they're already planning for themselves, we want, to, we want to approach it the same way. So we want to, for example, say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Client, obviously, if something were to happen to you, there are important people in your life that would need to get certain information. So maybe you've done your estate plan, maybe you've done your estate plan, maybe you've set beneficiaries for accounts and so on, maybe you haven't, but who would need to receive important information if something happened to you, right? Okay. And then they're gonna give you some names. So think about, just for a moment, think about if something were to happen to you, who are the family members or the people who live around you, the people that are most important to you, that if something were to happen to you, you would want them to know about it. It's usually, you know, your support network, siblings, parents, cousins, neighbors. So the next question would be, in the case of a funeral, who would need to be notified so that they could attend? Because that might not be the same people. People are hopefully are gonna attend my funeral that were maybe more distant, or you know, people that you know, I work with and that sort of thing that are not necessarily you know, first responders, right? Or how uh, Ed Milet would call them, the, the 5 a.m.ers, right? where you have an emergency come up at 5 a.m. and they're there to help you, right? But somebody who you know maybe a little bit more casually, but there's still somebody who cares about you and they would show up to your funeral, right? Is there anybody else who, um, who you would want notified uh, if there was a life event who would, you know, maybe be acquainted with your family, with your children, with your spouse, you know, that would need to be uh, notified of your passing, right? A good example of this, or another good question to ask would be, you know, if you send out Christmas cards every year, who are people that you would send out those Christmas cards to? So you say, the, the primary thing that people use this for is to keep track of their life insurance policies. Do you have life insurance through work, or do you have a private policy? The second most important thing people use this for is their estate plan. Do you have a will? Do you have a trust? Okay. The third most important thing people use this for is their retirement plan. Do you have a 401k? Do you have an IRA? So what are you gathering already? Definitely. Yeah, you're gathering their financial needs analysis without even having to get into it because it just comes out natural. Because it's a natural way to be able to offer them something that doesn't cost them anything. 
have a conversation that you might not normally have and open up doors for the financial planning conversation. Right? So it doesn't have to just be family and close. It could be other people. So, so your recipients are people who would actually receive information in the portal. Those are gonna be close people, right? Close friends, close family, right? Your authenticators are the people who need to be in the know to be able to confirm that you've had a life event. So they're probably those first responders that already know that something happened to you because <coughs> if they get a call from Legacy Shield and they say, hey, is this true? They need to be able to confirm that that's true. And if they're the last person to hear about it, it might not, right? But the notifiers, it doesn't really matter who they are because that's just somebody who can actually contact Legacy Shield and say, hey, we found this guy. He was laying in the middle of the road. We don't know what happened to him, right? I mean, it could be anybody. And then they're going to confirm with somebody that you've listed that you, you know, that something happened and then they'll release information to your recipients. So you can put anybody as a, as a notifier. You want them to know how Legacy Shield works because in the case that they need to ever use it, they have their own account, so they have they know how it works. Person who sets up an account, the, but then this the first twenty five people, snowball, that, right? Because yeah. you you put your brother in, <clears throat> and then he puts in twenty five people. Those are all going to show up as contacts for you, mm -hmm. but those people are all going to get a free account as well. Yeah. You will see here in your advisor portal uh -huh. if if they uh, become a client because they purchase something then they're going to become a client here. Okay. So if, if you're actively them. going to use this tool for your prospecting, uh -huh. you want to start the engine by putting your people in and get that snowball rolling. Yeah. And then you want to track this because you want to actually contact these people and have a conversation with them so that you can sit down with them and show them how it works. Because mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the big advantage is once you get in the door, you can help them with other things, right? Yeah. And then these will slowly turn into clients, which will feed new prospects and so on and so forth. Yeah. Even if you just completely ignore this, the system is going to drip on them and invite them to do their plan. Uh -huh. And eventually, if they purchase, you're going to get paid and get credit on it. <clears throat> and even if you don't do anything, when they put in people, they're gonna show up as new prospects for you. If they show up here, they've gotten an email. Uh -huh. They're gonna wonder what that email is. So if you call them and you say, hey, your your dog's uncle recently did recently did his planning and put you in as an important person in his life. Because of that, you get access to this free portal. I'd like to show you how it works, right? And they're like, well, who are you? Well, if you go into your account or you claim your account, you'll see that I'm the Legacy Shield rep that will work with you, right? Because you're assigned to them. And the idea of if you put in about 20 people and each one of them puts in 10 or 15 or 20 people, now you got. It just accumulates. So, so my question is, sorry, Logan. my question is, when it says Legacy, Legacy Shield Advisor, you know, Matera Gishio, or Evan, and then when you meet with them, and then you're like, hey, I'm World Financial Group Transamerica, do you think that will throw them off a little bit? If you go well, in you and, and say, I'm gonna sell you life insurance, then yeah, it's gonna throw them off. Right. But if you go in and say, here's why you want this, Keep track of your life insurance keep track of your retirement keep track of your do you have those things oh no let's talk about it gotcha right okay we want to sit down with the people who are closest to you make sure that they're taken care of we want to get exposure for your business so that you can get things rolling right and this empowers you now to do that with your clients so now you have both if they become a, an advisor you get to their warm market and if they become a client you get to their warm market 